It's the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals. I, I'm desperate to win it, yeah. I'm desperate to win it. These celebrities are all passionate about food. Getting through the semi-final of MasterChef, well, wow, doesn't come better than that. We're looking for that exceptional cooking star. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. I am petrified. These four celebrities are about to face the toughest cooking challenges of their lives as they battle it out for a place in the Celebrity MasterChef finals. Today's challenges are all about producing exceptional comfort food. First, they'll have to produce the perfect breakfast. Then they'll need to feed 600 hungry builders a hearty, enticing lunch. This is about volume. This is about consistency. I think that is seriously, seriously daunting. Finally, they'll have to master the ultimate in comfort cooking, making the perfect roast dinner and pudding. It looks like it's been put together with a huge axe and a shovel, but it tastes great. <laughs> the challenge is on, as any one of these four still has a chance of becoming Celebrity Master Chef. I'm completely out of my comfort zone and quite worried about the whole experience. I want to be the one that, you know, starts off with no experience whatsoever and takes it all away. Semi-final, you can see the trophy. You can almost touch it, but it could also be a million miles away. I have to say, I keep, um, I keep pinching myself to think there's only four of us left and it's going to be heartbreaking for the next person to go and I just hope it's not me. They've all got the love, they've all got the passion, they've all got the want. Have they got the drive? Welcome to the semi-final. We now up the ante, don't we? We now pile on the pressure and our expectations get higher and higher. And we want to see you develop as cooks quickly. This is where it starts to get really exciting. This is the breakfast test. This is about volume. And what you're going to do for us is you're going to cook 10 plates which are exactly the same as each other. You have a huge array of ingredients. You can do whatever you want. This breakfast test is also about teamwork. And you are standing next to your teammate. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 minutes. Let's cook. The celebrities must create 10 identical breakfasts out of bacon, smoked salmon, muffins, eggs, spinach, ham, chives, and creme fraiche. Um, let's do creasy spoon. Sausage bacon. We could do grilled tomatoes. That is boring. Okay. We could do scrambled eggs, smoked oh, salmon. Oh, a little bit of smoked salmon. Egg. Can we make it look nice? I, yeah, I think we can. Um, we could do eggs Benedict. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, because I think it's horrible. I love this round because they're going to work as a team and it's their first volume test. Ten plates of identical breakfast and working with a partner. There's a waffle maker. Let's use a waffle maker. That'd be fun. You've had ten minutes. You've had ten minutes. Oh, oh I would... Oh, see, no, right. Hang on. We've got to make a decision. One of us has to be responsible. Andy Peters is the much-loved TV presenter and producer. So far, he's impressed with his technical ability. You are about to set the first real record, the dessert on the first round, which I do not have a critical comment about at all. But his flavours often don't live up to his magnificent presentation. I think the execution of everything is absolutely perfect, but it, it needs to be tasted and redone and tasted and redone. 
His teammate, Atomic Kitten Liz McLaren, had never used an oven before this competition, but continues to impress the judges with raw talent and a natural palate. Your duck is cooked perfectly. Whether well, that's by fault or by chance, I'm not quite sure. Now we've got to figure out how on earth this is happening. But her lack of experience is a constant hindrance to her cooking. It's just plating up again. Yeah. And again, you're getting a little bit nervous and tense. Still shaking. To be honest, I think I made quite a mess of it. It took you a long time to decide on a dish. Yeah. What was going on, Liz? At first, Andy was going for waffles and I was going for greasy spoon. So you are doing his and hers breakfast. The, his breakfast is the ham and eggs, that's yours, Andy. Yeah. And the, the, her breakfast is the salmon and the scrambled eggs, and that's yours, Liz. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. And they're coming together on one plate. Yes. Is this to settle the dispute about who, who's... Who's wearing are? the trousers? <laughs> Exactly. And who is wearing the trousers? Liz. Quite. No, I was going to say you. <laughs> what about the idea of placing up ten breakfasts all at the same time? Definitely petrified about that. Because it seems to me that you're actually plating up 20 breakfasts. Where well, you, should, you should be maybe doing five each, you're now doing ten each. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Come on. It's semi-final time. Guys, you've got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes. Ex-Holby star Mark Morahan's passion for cooking has impressed the judges. I just care and I just want it to be the best it can possibly be. Can you give me two seconds? <clears throat> but his messy combinations can let him down. And then we have this sort of chaos going on in this pan with stuff all over the place. Cooking with him is ex-Brookside actor Lewis Emmerich. His dishes, influenced by his dad's West African cooking, have been packed with flavour. It's the taste of the sea, the textures are fantastic, it's delicious. Don't, don't let it change you. <laughs> no, no. But his lack of refinement is an issue. What on earth? half the Atlantic Ocean and three kilos of spuds he's doing in there, we've no idea. <laughs> what are you making for us? OK, well, we're going to do some um, muffins with uh, smoked salmon, with um, wilted spinach, with, um, with bacon on the side. Is this a traditional breakfast dish? That doesn't mean that's what will end up on the plate. We have to taste it first. If it tastes good, then we will plate it up. But we're going to do it anyway and see what it, how, it, how it tastes all together as a... Combo. Is timing uh, an issue at all? I think we've got less time than we actually think, so, yeah, I think we need to be on the ball. I've got to say, you two guys have got huge smiles on your faces. It's fantastic. It's very exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. is. It's an absolute buzz, and it's yeah, great it working with a partner. Yeah. It's absolutely, you know, working, we're working for each other, and so we want to we well, do our best. It's a two streakers from Liverpool be in the semi-final. <laughs> Go away. Guys, you've only got five minutes left. Do you think we should just stick with the salmon as one, or do you think we'd overcomplicate it, the tastes with this? Just put a little bit of that on the side, but just a little bit. I don't think it's worth taking the risk. Oh, oh you got two minutes! Two minutes! With time running out, Andy and Liz's initial indecision is pushing them to their limits. And Lewis and Mark still can't agree whether to serve their side dish. Are you not putting the spinach on that? We've decided against it. We think it, the, the saltiness of the bacon might just overpower the, the salmon. It's not dead salty, you know. I just think that is, does what it says on the tin, exactly. Just a little blob on the... Just, just a, go on, then. Go, just on, then. Go, on then. go on, then. Go on, then. We've got, we've got a minute. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just get it on the plate. That's a bit of a mess. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, step away from your bench, please. Time is up. Away from the bench. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Unable to decide on one dish, Andy has made fried eggs and bacon on a half toasted muffin while Liz has made smoked salmon and scrambled eggs on another. I've got to say, I'm amazed. 
because I thought, when is the debate going to finish and when is the cooking going to begin? And I kept looking at my watch, looking around, I thought, they haven't cooked anything yet. Uh... They're still arguing. It's a bit much for me. I mean, you have done them very well, I think, but they are great. I think they're really well made, they're well seasoned, they taste delicious. It's just a little bit confused. OK. And, you know, we always say this with you, Andy, you sort of like to have... You're very good classically, technique-wise, you're very, very good, but you do like to confuse your plate sometimes. Ham, egg and tomato <laughs> is a tried and tested formula, isn't it? What is impressive is that you achieved everything you'd set out to do. It took you an age to get there, but once you'd made your mind, it's pretty good. I was, I was worried at first because we couldn't agree. Maybe it wasn't the best of ideas to do a his and hers. Mark and Lewis have made scrambled eggs served on a muffin with creme fraiche, chives and a spinach and bacon mix. But will their last-minute garnish impress the judges? I was slightly concerned about your confusion, actually, when you were plating up. There was food all over the place, plates all over the place, disorganisation. It was interesting to watch. I'm not going to um, taste any of the bacon with this, if that's all right, fellas, because I knew it would clash as you were putting it on. The textures and flavours are delightful because it's all really nice and soft. Slightly acidic cheese and then wonderful smoky salmon and a little bit of salt. Really good flavours. Really good flavours. For me, I think a little bit more attention to detail. The bacon and the spinach suddenly appears in your mouth and you think to yourself, What's going on here? Yeah. Don't think you have to reinvent the wheel. Not bad effort. And if you feel strongly next time... Yeah. Stand your ground. It's a learning process, and uh, these guys know what they're talking about. We'll take that on board and do that next time. In the end, we, because we made it, we went with it, and it was the wrong decision, but, you know, again, it was a lesson learned. I'll tell you what. Not bad. Uh, we're at a very early stage through this semi-final yet. A lot more to happen, and I'm really looking forward to watching this battle unfold. Thank you very much indeed. We will see you again very soon. Thank you. We know these four are the best cooks so far, but they are all doing the same task. They are all in the same position. Andy and Liz ended up with two dishes on one plate because they couldn't make up their mind what should be done and nobody took charge. Mark and Lewis today again did very, very well, but that procrastination at the end, that idea of whether the spinach goes on or not, funny enough, it messed up their plates. Oh, yeah. I would rather have indecision and procrastination at the start of the task rather than that procrastination at the end of the task. Start the task off with the confidence that whatever you're going to cook, whatever you're going to make, is going to work. Well, tomorrow, it is really going to be exciting. I think we've got to really show what we're about and justify the fact that we've been chosen to be in the last four, you know. Having done today's task, I'm now even more excited about being part of the semi-final. You've got to be organised, you've got to be planned right from the start, it's got to be laid out. Nothing those celebrities have ever done is going to prepare them for what is going to happen to them tomorrow. I'm definitely up for the challenge, well, more, more, than, more than you'd know. I reckon there's going to be stuff flying all over the joint. I think it's going to get really tough, definitely. Good luck, guys. The battle for the Celebrity MasterChef crown has begun. From now on, the celebrities will need stamina and adaptability because the challenges are about to get a lot tougher. It's 6 a.m and the celebrities are on their way to West London. Their destination, the building site of London's biggest shopping centre.
In just under six hours, 600 hungry construction workers will need lunch. Welcome to Westfield, London. As you can see, we are standing in an enormous building site. Usually at lunchtime, there's six different main courses served. So each team is going to do three different main courses, 100 portions of each main course, a total of 600 dishes between you. Today's task is about volume. It's about understanding your customer, and it's about organisation. Because you simply cannot fail. These guys can't turn up here after working all morning to find they have no lunch. Guys, you can do it. Good luck. They'll work in the same teams under the leadership of head chef Pam Bradley. Your dry stores and larder and fridge are there if you just help yourselves and just make your menu out there. And if you have any questions throughout the day, just give me a shout. I'm yeah. here to help. Thanks, Thanks Pam. Pam. Thanks, Pam. Cheers. In a typical day, Pam and her team get through 20 kilos of meat, 300 eggs and 80 litres of milk. In just four hours, each team needs to have prepared and cooked three main courses, a hundred portions of each. The first job, to design their menu. Chilli, pasta and stew. Like yesterday, Mark and Lewis waste no time deciding what to cook. A chilli con carne, a tomato and bacon pasta bake, and a traditional liver puddly and beef stew called scouse. Yeah, but do two on the top and one on the other. Always. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Lewis is confident about his chilli. I'm going to get the... I'm going to do the... Uh, do the mince off, off separately first. Yes. Yeah. And it's already so I'm going to, I'm going to sweat onions and that in here. Yeah. Onions, garlic, yeah. chilli, peppers. Sweat that off. Get the powder in there. To, yeah. To, to, then add the mince and then start to go from there. OK. All right. Which just leaves Mark to prepare 10 kilos of carrots potatoes and the beef for the stew. It's quantity I'm worried about. I know. I don't know how much I'm putting in. Andy and Liz have devised a detailed schedule to complete their dishes on time. Like yesterday, they'll cook the first two dishes separately. Andy, a chicken stir-fry. Liz, her first ever shepherd's pie. Then they'll come together to cook the third dish, gammon and eggs. OK, one breast per portion, so I need 100 breasts of chicken. I'm feeling so stressed. Andy said, do you know how to cook shepherd's pie? I went, yeah, and then I went, oh, do I? And let's be honest, Liz has never made a shepherd's pie. We know the truth. It's petrifying. They're an hour in. Mark's prepped his veg, but now there's three joints of beef to get through. Mark, just a bit concerned. I think you're really going to have to get your meat on. Cause I know. I, I, I know you're doing really well, but um, I'm just a bit worried that you won't have it ready in time. Right, so, well, should we start it now? So I would just get anything you can on. I am panicking right now. Panic has set in in a big way. Mark and Lou's don't get their stew on now. I think it's going to be a bit too tight, really. So they need to get things hurrying up a bit. <laughs> See, that's just eating into me cooking time. It's not good. With only half the meat prepared and the clock ticking, Mark starts cooking the scouse. Make the pie, yeah. yeah. I'll make the chicken stir fry. Yeah. This is all last minute. On the other side of the kitchen, Liz is on schedule and starts to brown off her mince for the shepherd's pie. I can't even 
even get me spooning. There's no way this is ever gonna cook. We are with the meat. It's all right, mate, we're all right. It's a nightmare, this. Oh, no, we're gonna be all right. Mark might be panicking, but Lewis is quietly confident. Not to know what to know, we're still sort of on target. Yeah, I think we'll get it done okay. There's no point panicking about it. If there's five minutes to go and we're still not ready, then I'll panic. My dad was a steel fixer, and, um, you know, all of us, all of us lads, I had to go and work with him, so I spent 18 months working on the building sites. I've worked in factories, so I've eaten in canteens like this. They're going to be feeling hungry and they're going to want substantial stuff. I mean, you know, I don't know, they say lots of carbs and that. That's the kind of stuff, if you're working outside and zero temperatures or whatever, that's the kind of gear you want to eat, and so that's what we'll be trying to give them. I've got to say, I'm fairly impressed. They seem to have grasped it. They seem to understand what they've got to do. And they seem to be at it, which is fantastic. Lewis and Mark have decided to go for the big pot wonders. The one pot wonder, which is all done, out it goes, ready for service. Then they sit back and relax and they watch Liz and Andy sweat. I think that that gammon, egg and chips of Andy's and Liz is going to sell really, really well. They've just got to keep on making them during service. Tiring, but doable. This is crazy. This is not. While Liz struggles with her mints, hey! Andy takes on a hundred chicken breast fillets. I think I've now sliced more chicken breast than I've ever sliced in my life put together. So how long is your chicken going to take? Do you need to get it on to? Uh, no, it'll be quick. It's a stir fry. In 45 minutes, 600 hungry builders will be queuing for lunch. But with their chili and scouse uppermost in their mind, Mark and Lewis have forgotten to check on the pasta for their tomato and bacon bake. Well, you think, guys, a little bit overcooked, is it? Is it? A little bit. Well... Maybe start cooking another bit of pasta now, just so you're covered. You're saying ditch that? Yeah, ditch that. Yeah, them two there. Okay. Yeah. While they set about recooking five kilos of penne, Andy has his own challenge. To season something for a hundred people like I'm doing now is really quite difficult. You know, it really is. It's a minefield, really, because you just have no idea how many cloves of garlic shall I put in. One clove of garlic. We'd probably do ten people, so I'll use ten cloves of garlic. Woohoo! With 25 minutes to go, Liz starts filling her shepherd's pies. I can't believe you've made that taste so amazing on such a grand scale. Thank you. And Andy begins the daunting task of stir-frying his chicken. Totally doing quantities by eye. I just sort of, I've been doing that pretty much all along. Having redone their pasta, Mark and Lewis need to make up for lost time and get the tomato and bacon sauce cooked. Salt and pepper, have it? Yeah, salt and pepper's in. Okay, I'm just going to check the bacon. Yeah. Ain't no room at the inn. This needs to go on, and as you can see, there's too many pans, I can't actually get it on, which is a bit of a problem. Um... Front of house manager Trazer is responsible for getting the food out on time. With ten minutes to go, she needs the trays to be put out. I'll do the gammon. Oil. And then you just do it, do you? Yeah, but not low, it's just a tiny bit. Of oil? Yeah. 
four minutes on the gammon. With minutes to spare, Mark and Lewis managed to get the chilli, pasta bake and scouse finished. How are you, Bonnie, lad? But Greg has some bad news. Do you know about the sauce? The sauce? Yeah, the cook who was cooking beside you yeah. was making a tomato sauce for his meatballs. That's what you've used in the pasta. It's got no bacon in it. Don't panic! Don't panic! Without bacon, all they're serving is pasta and cooked tin tomatoes. Oh, you... They must have moved ours and put another one. Yeah, they must have done. Where ours was? All right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, but how could, how could that happen? I have no idea. Yeah, you want one over there? Some, some cheese. Cheese. That little bit of cheese we've got left, if there's any. That looks good. OK, if you just put it over there, that's fine, don't worry. Just drop one water over there. So good that I made five. We're late now, guys. About two minutes late. We're never late. So the guy's going to ready to knock the door down. OK. I'll take this. You take that. Finally, everything's ready. But will Mark and Lewis's dishes of pasta baked scouse and chilli be what the builders want? Or will they favour Andy and Liz's chicken stir-fry, shepherd's pie and gammon with fried eggs? Bon appétit. Another, because apparently it's selling well already. So well, now, what's the biggest number of people you've ever catered for? I have a dining table that seats six. I never allow more than four guests. Our celebrities, our semi-finalists, never imagined we would do this to them. Never imagined we'd put them under this pressure. But we have, and for good reason. It gets to the thing about planning, about volume, and about consistency. For Andy to keep up with it, it's miraculous work. It's a Trojan, the boy. Eating itself. God, I wish it was cooking itself. <laughs> Mark and Lewis's scouse is proving equally popular, but this could be a problem. Stupid. Mark and Lewis, they have only done half the meat for the stew, so they're not going to have enough. So I don't know really what we're going to do. Bit of a crisis. There's another one underneath, because we only put one on, so there's another one underneath in the square, yeah? OK, all right, thank you. Marco! Oh, the scouse is flying out! <laughs> the, uh, the scouse is definitely going to run out. Thank you! We've only got about 20 to 30 portions left, ladies. It's not going to be enough. So, I don't know if they've got a backup plan. I mean, they obviously liked it. And let's go anything back there for me. We haven't, I'm afraid. No. The brief was 100 portions of each main course 
they haven't made enough. If we get to a state where food's running out, they have royally messed up. Lunch service is peaking. While Mark and Lewis can only look on. Chicken stir fry, noodles, please. Andy and Liz need to keep cooking their stir fry and eggs. Now? Sure, sure, sure. Freddie, you want to swap and put another shepherd's pie up as well, please? Yes, yes, boss. I had some shepherd's pie with potatoes and gravy. And very tasty, very nice. I'm very happy with it. Put a little bit more stir-fry on there. There you go, chicken noodles. Thank you. I had the stir-fry and it was very nice indeed. Are they going to keep working here? <laughs> I just had the beef stew and, yeah, pretty well cooked. Uh, nice man with big veggies in it, so very good. Finally, after a gruelling three-hour service, lunch is over. It was, it was more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's the, one of the toughest jobs I've ever done. Yeah. It's the first time we've rested properly. Shattered. Absolutely done it. Pam, incredible experience for our four celebrities. They were shocked beyond belief when they walked through the door. In general, what did you think about Cooks? I say fair play to them. I actually thought they would not pull it off, but they did a fantastic job. But what did you think of the teamwork of Liz and Andy? Yeah, they, yeah, they did a very, very good job. They kind of did their own thing, really, through the, through the day, like the stir-fry and the gammon. But, yeah, did a brilliant job. Uh, Lewis and Mark as a team? Brilliant team. They worked, they gelled really well and they worked really well together. Tell me about Lewis and Mark's food. It was very, very good, but they had a bit of a hiccup. There was two tomato sauces going on, one for our meatballs and one that they had with their bacon, and they used our sauce without the bacon. Right, but that could have really jeopardised your service, couldn't it? It could have, yeah. But, yeah, it did a great job. The scout was brilliant, and actually one of the chefs asked for their recipe. Um, the only thing, they did not do enough of it. So I think maybe quality more than quantity. If the proof of the pudding is in the eating, which team sold the most dishes? Liz and Andy. We know that Lewis and Mark didn't quite make up the amount of portions they were supposed to. So that's the only problem. If the men aren't fed, that's it at the end of the day. The Liz and Andy had the portions and had the amount, but the other guys let themselves down. The celebrities have been on their feet for over 12 hours. They have successfully fed 600 builders excellent, hearty comfort food. But their journey is just beginning. be here again to cook some more is just beyond my comprehension. It's strenuous, it stresses you out, but you know what, it's something I'll remember for a long, long time. I'm absolutely battered and bruised and tired and happy. <laughs> the more I, I'm learning on, on this in this competition, the more passionate it's, it's making me to go on and do more and, and you know, hopefully get to the final. This is an exciting challenge because this is the first semi-final challenge where you are on your own. This is your take on an absolute classic. One hour, 50 minutes, deliver to John and I a roast dinner we are truly going to fall in love with. It's about comfort food. 
It's about a great roast dinner. It's about food that we want to eat, and it's about food that you would serve to your friends and your family. People you love, off you go. The celebrities have to make four portions of what they consider to be the perfect roast dinner and pudding. Lewis, no doubt, is a great cook, and he has an amazing natural palate. The guy understands how flavours work. His food just looks shabby. He just needs to refine it a bit. Um, Lewis, I don't think I've yet seen you so focused. What's happening? Just tunnel vision, mate. Just concentrating on this, and I'm going to do the best that I can in the time that I've got. Lewis, I look down at your bench, and I see a man who is organised, a man who is neat. Why is it your plates don't look like that? <laughs> well, hopefully today's will be. OK. And what are those two dishes going to be that are going to be crisp and beautiful? Well, it's going to be uh, roast beef uh, and Yorkshire pudding and uh, vanilla uh, cheesecake. Very traditional yeah. dishes, but I look down at your bench and I see basil, chilies and bell peppers. And my dad used to always say, you must have pepper in the food, son. Make it strong. Even if we'd have roast, he'd still insist on putting a bit of chilli in, but probably said, no, it's perfect now, perfect now. What about timing, Lewis? The last time I did it, I didn't do it in the time I allotted, so this will be a first. That meat he's got is really, really lean. It's got no fat at all. And he smothered it in salt before it went in there as well. That could possibly be very dry. I don't think there's any place for chilli and peppers in roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Anybody else, I would probably say, no way, there shouldn't be peppers in there, there shouldn't be chilli. But that's what he grew up on, and it's great that he's doing it. Liz admitted to me, not so long ago, she never roasted a chicken. And today she's doing roast chicken. She's here to prove a point. Liz, you do look terribly flustered. Can you, can you just try and explain to me what it is that's going through your mind at the moment? Pure fear. I'm just worried that it's going to all go wrong. What's going to follow your roast chicken, Liz? Uh, rice pudding. Whoa! Turn them over with a spoon. Rather than shake off fat about, darling, you're scaring me. Just turn <laughs> them over with a spoon. OK, this is comfort food at absolute best. Yeah, it is. If I get it right, it is stressful, I think. It's just a lot of stuff to do. We have taken a risk with Liz, but I still firmly believe that she can give these guys a run for their money. Unfortunately, she looks to be in a complete blind panic and will be lucky to get a chicken sandwich. You have half an hour left. to me, really does have exceptional skill and very, very good knowledge. He has a problem where he tries to prissy, he tries to over-decorate his food. I'd like to see his food and his flavours get a little bit bolder. Are you enjoying the competition, Andy? Um, do you know, I never dreamt that I would enjoy this this much. When I said I'd do it, I genuinely thought I'd probably be knocked out in the first round. I do come in every time wanting to impress, genuinely I do. This is looking like a lot of work to me. <laughs> uh, it is a lot of work. What is your dinner? Uh, well, you said that we could interpret it any way we wanted. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm doing roast poussin. Yeah. Poussin. Baby chicken. Yeah, exactly, baby chicken. Uh, with stuffing. Potatoes. But sweet potatoes? Yeah, sweet potatoes. Roasted? Yes, they will be roasted. Um, what other veg? Uh, cabbage. Right, and... Stir-fried cabbage. And a pudding? Yep. Blueberry crumble. Andy, you always set yourself a lot to do. Yes. Have you found it difficult to sort of pare this back? Uh, <laughs> if you'd seen what I originally wanted to do, you'd have laughed. So, uh, this is the scaled down version of the Peter's Sunday lunch. 
He's giving us a stir fry cabbage and he's giving us sweet potatoes. What's going on? Give me comfort food. Is it going to be comfort food or is it going to be dainty little food? You've only got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. If ever there was a love of food and a real desire and a passion, it's Mark. I am blown away by how clean your bench is. And I've been saying it all the time to you, clean up, know where you are, and finally, you are relaxed. Mm. Yeah, I, could, I got everything in order and started to get a bit methodical and it really helped. As well as anything else, it was therapy and um, it's, it's made me relax more and I've got everything in the oven, so fingers crossed. Good on you. Thank you. What is your dinner? Well, I've done a loin of pork and I've got butternut squash, carrots, turnip and parsnips, bacon in uh, red wine, potatoes, it's got everything in there. It is good to see you in control. Because that's the point, isn't it? I know I have to be. If I need to get any further in this competition, I have to be in control and I have to show that I know what I'm doing. Mark has suddenly realised that a clean bench, you end up being organised. He's cleaning himself up, he can actually get clarity and he's doing what he should be doing. I'm not sure about Mark's. And also, I like the idea of the pork and the crackling. I'm not sure I like the idea of all those vegetables. Ladies and gentlemen, you have five minutes left. As well as burning her rice pudding, Liz discovers she's ruined her gravy. Regroup. No, one sec. Regroup. Get yourself some clarity. Find out exactly what you're going to do. Put your stuff back into order and do what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm worried about Liz now because she hasn't got very much time left and she has to do it again. Will she do it in time? Two minutes, boys and girls. Two minutes left. Adventures, your time is up. Liz is hoping she's rescued her first ever roast chicken and stuffing served with roast potatoes, parsnips, sprouts, and gravy. Crispy potatoes, still soft inside and fluffy. Chicken is still moist, which is good. The gravy is full of flavour. Liz, for somebody who not so long ago has never roasted a chicken, mate, I've got to say, if I had one, I'd take my hat off to you. Thank you. You must feel like you're walking on water. I do. <laughs> it's soft, moist meat. It's deep, meaty gravy. But it's nowhere near wet enough. Yeah. It, it needs a lot of gravy. If you think of all the dry things you got there, mm. you need loads and loads of gravy. You do have a nightmare with the gravy. I, 
I had an absolute nightmare. So I know exactly what you mean when you say you need more gravy. Has she managed to bring her cinnamon and raisin rice pudding back from disaster? Liz, the first rice pudding you burnt. Yes. I did. Had to do the second one. Yes. So this is the second attempt at the rice pudding. Yes. It's not that lovely, rich, creamy, comforting rice pudding that, you know, I, th I think of. Mm. I think rice puddings should be wetter. Yes. And I think they should have a skin on, and they, they need to go in the oven. Okay. Uh, to form that skin. You've got to relax a bit. Definitely. You do. Let it flow, let it happen. You're a good natural cook, let it go. I've been really, really worried about this, and I think now this is done, I can move on. This is MasterChef. Do you honestly think a roast dinner is going to be your toughest test? Well, you have your personal things, don't you? And roast dinner, for me, is a nightmare, to be quite honest. That was pure stress. It was pure stress. Has Mark cleaned up his act with his roast pork, crackling, roast potatoes, leeks, parsnips, turnips and pumpkin with red wine gravy? You quite enjoyed this round and you're quite happy with what you got here, I can but tell. Whether it's good enough, I don't know. I know that's the best roast dinner I've ever made. I think it's all cooked really, really well. I think it needs to be just tidied up a bit. Let's just now think about the semi-finals of MasterChef. And although we're doing comfort food, that's brilliant. Every time we do something, let's just take it one more step. Just make it look a bit sexier. Mmm, that crackling. Salty, crispy, slightly fatty underneath. Well, yeah. Go on, boy. It looks like it's been put together with a huge axe and a shovel, but it tastes great. <laughs> it's, to me, it says comfort, the whole thing, and it's not fancy, it's, it is what it is. That was my thinking behind the whole dish. Will the presentation of his lemon sponge pudding and cream be any better? That is lighter than it looks, and it finishes with a very, very nice lemony citrus ending. That works for me definitely. Decent, that's a decent, decent, decent pudding. The fragrance of lemon hits your nose as it goes up to your mouth. It delivers on all levels. It's a really, really lovely tasting pudding. Texturally, it's fantastic. Really? For me, it's just about presentation. Your flavours are absolutely right. How have you felt over the last few days? The last two days have been... They just wrecked me, to be fair. Mentally and physically, I've, I've been shattered. I've just invested a lot of my heart and soul into this. And you don't expect to get emotionally wrapped up in it, but you do. I, I want this badly. I want to get through to the final. Will Lewis impress with his spicy take on traditional roast beef served with Yorkshire pudding, roast peppers, carrots and parsnip, and a chilli-infused gravy? That is damn near perfect. The beef is flavoursome and very moist. Those potatoes are soft. Your pudding is as light as a feather. And that bit of horseradish in there as well, it just gives it a little bit of kick. Very nice. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. Thank you. The flavour of your potatoes is fantastic. Really fantastic. And the depth of flavour and your gravy is brilliant, and you really cooked it out really, really, really well. And that is where all your flavour is coming from. The flavour of the gravy, to me, is a great surprise, and I love the heat that comes with it. Can his vanilla cheesecake wow the judges as well? Good, good, thick biscuit base. It does need a sharp dimension. I reckon you should have just pureed some fruit at that. It would have given you a sharp contrast to it.
it is quite thick and quite sweet. But, Lewis, I've got to say, I'm impressed today because the presentation of your dessert is something which you've never done before. And you are changing very, very fast. Did you ever think that you would go on such a journey? Uh, I wanted to go further. I want to go all the way. I want to be in the final. Um, I've not done all this for nothing. You can't produce something. And then when you hear John and Greg say, that's good, it's like, wow, that's, you know, that there's, there's nothing better. Andy hopes to get closer to the title with roasted poussin with stuffing wrapped in pancetta, sweet potatoes, stir-fried cabbage, and Portuguese-style salt-cooked shallots. What you do and the way you cook is innovative, really. The idea of the shallots and the salt then popped out and then put into the sauce. They make little stuffing balls and wrapping them up. The processes, again, Andy, are really extraordinary. There's lots of stuff going on. But it's comfort food. And sometimes I think we've just got to just chill a bit. <laughs> oh, my word. You saw me trying to get the stuff on the fork, and there's so much to try and get bits of. It's difficult to get all those flavours as one dish. What you've done here, I feel, is you've sacrificed flavour for technique. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to get that balance. I've got a slightly sweet tooth. Actually, I haven't got a slightly anything. I have got a real sweet tooth. So the sweet stickiness in your sauce matched with the sweetness in your potato, it's pretty full on for me, mate. You know, you take a British classic and you start messing around with it, putting your flash cocky sweet potatoes in there, you are, you are skating on thin ice. Can he fare any better with his blueberry shortcake crumble and vanilla ice cream? They're not all the same. There's a few which have sort of started to bubble over the top. Mm. Uh, and that's because you used to use blueberries. And sometimes the blueberries do explode very, very fast. All the juice comes up the top and then evaporates. Right. Because I expect to go into here now and find very little underneath that crumble. Oh. You're right, obviously. You are saved by your ice cream. You've got this blueberry, crunchy, biscuit crumb top, but the richness and the smoothness of that ice cream is something to behold, young man. That is seriously, seriously good ice cream. Cool. That is superb. There is truly some striking stuff going on. We, uh, we said comfort food, you definitely deliver that with your pudding. Your main, stir fry and sweet potato, comfort, I'm not sure. I'm not happy with it, to be honest, not at all. Not in the slightest. I don't think it showed me to my full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your hard work but it is going to get a lot tougher than this. Thank you very much indeed. We will see you again soon. Oh, Comfort food. Food that really makes you smile, that makes you happy, and is Moorish and delicious. That's what this task was all about. Special mention has to go to Andy. I mean, the work the guy did. Absolutely phenomenal amount of work and a really good looking plate of food. What Andy did today, I think, was technically brilliant, but sometimes he does sacrifice the flavour. I like doing things technically. Give me instructions and I'll follow them to the letter. I do cook from the heart, though, and I do put a lot of love into it. Mark today got flavour into his food, good flavours, but it's too big. It's a little bit too scruffy. It, ne it needs work on presentation. And he did say, look, you know, it is comfort food. This is how I'd serve it up. Well, this is also the semi-final of MasterChef, mate, and you must bear that in mind in everything you do. The whole experience for me has been immense. 
and I'll never forget it. But I want to, I want to stay. I really like Lewis's uh, roast beef. I thought that was good. Loved his gravy, loved his potatoes. The most impressive thing for me was the flavour he did get out of the piece of beef to make the gravy with its bit of chilli in it, because he likes that punch that his father used to cook with. I've got to say, it was melt in the mouth, and that was brilliant. Lewis has decided to start to present his food in a very different way. He's always packed flavour in his food. We've always said there's been a problem with presentation, and he's starting to attack it. When I need to knuckle down, need to sort of apply something, I can't do it. Liz was in a complete fluster. She burnt her rice pudding, she had problems with the gravy, she couldn't quite work out her timings, but she did a great roast chicken, first time ever, a really good gravy, but not enough of it, good potatoes. You know, the flavours were right. It just, again, needed a bit more guts. She is still developing, though, and she has got a great touch. When you consider other competitors have been roasting dinners for years, and this is the first time she's ever roasted a chicken, the girl has a natural touch. Every time I think to myself, there's not enough of this in there, they say there wasn't enough of this in there. But I should honestly trust me on your things. I tell you what, the next round is seriously, seriously exciting. Next time, the pressure is on as the celebrities are thrown into the world of fine dining at some of the country's most exclusive venues. It's a pity it's gone cold. Mm. These guys are here for a reason. They're here because they want to be able to cook and to prove they're great cooks and to continue to learn. Can they handle it? I mean, they are great cooks. Can they handle the pressure? Put those back in the oven, put those back in the oven, put those back in that pan and back in the oven. Can Lewis make that food just that little bit more special, make it really shine? Oh, wow! <laughs> Can Mark channel that emotion and make his food look as good as it tastes? Can Andy focus on flavour and texture? These things are nowhere near cooked. And can Liz really keep up with that natural talent? Are we nearly ready? Save us! All four celebrities will be pushed to their culinary limits as they battle it out for the title of Celebrity Master Chef. Don't open the oven!